So the main problem is to uh, write a formula which will encode grids, simply. Grids of uh, n, n times n. Then, then having uh, two variables is easy to, easy to encode this, this, uh, these constraints. So the problem is to, to construct grids. And how will we do it? Um, in, what, what we really need? We need a formula, a formula eta, such that uh, every, uh, such that the standard grid, that should be G, G, N here, can be expanded to a model of eta. Expanded because um, the standard grid has two predicates. H, which is horizontal, uh, relation for horizontal neighborhood, and, and V, for vertical. Mm, so we, will ex we expand this language by some unary predicates, unary predicates and three equivalence relations, yes? And we want, we, want, uh, every, uh, we want this standard grid. Uh, we, we, we have to be able to, uh, to expand the standard grid to a model of eta. Uh, this is one property which we want. And another property is that uh, each model should uh, satisfy the property that for every x there exists horizontal successor, vertical successor. And the third thing is that uh, it should satisfy such uh, that, that relation H should be, should be, in every model relation H should be complete over, over V. So if we have such a pattern in a the model, then here we need H connections, connection. Then from every model, if, if, if we have these three, this, this, these two properties, yes, then from every model we will be uh, able to extract a, a, a grid. And it is in, enough for two poses. Uh, Okay, so having such a formula, there, there would be no, no other problem. So the problem now is just to construct this formula. And here is the expansion of our grid. So what is, how we expand the grid? Uh, we, oh, uh, this, this probably, you probably can't see, can't see uh, those numbers here, but this H is not the, the grid, grid relation. The grid relation is not presented on this, on this picture. And here we have unary predicates H, H0, H1, H2, H3. And again, I don't remember. No, so <laughs> something is wrong here or something is invisible here. Uh, I think there are three types. Zero, one, two. Three types, sorry. Zero, one, two, zero, one, two, zero, one, two. On, on both edges, yes? And uh, uh, we, di we, want we, we divide, um, we, cover, we cover this n times n grid with uh, tiles which represent uh, equivalence classes. So these black tiles represent E2 classes, uh, this gray represent E1 classes, and white represent E3 classes. Uh, the desired, desired di division into, the, into these classes should have such a property that it is, uh, mm, it is regular. And, uh, and of course, uh, two, two tiles of the same color are not adjacent. Yes? In fact, we, we treated, treated this pair of squares as a single, single tile. Having uh, there, are, there, are, there are simple patterns than, than this one, but, but I, I have this one on, on the picture. Uh, observe that such properties cannot be obtained with, with just two equivalence relations, yes? You need, you need three if you, if you want. Of course, and of course, these this, this tiles have to be of bounded size somehow. Yes? In our case, uh, each tile covers one, two, three, nine elements, at most nine elements, yes? So, so they have to be of, of some, some, uh, some constant size, bounded, bounded by a constant. Uh, and having three relations, we, we can obtain such a grid. Having two, it is impossible. It is even, of course, it is much, much, much easier with four, which since we can simply say this is one color, second, third, fourth, and, and we repeat, we repeat the pattern. But with three, it is also obvious how to construct such a uh, such an expansion. And now, uh, what uh, what will be said by our formula? 
So our formula captures some properties of this, of this, of this expansion of, of, the, of the standard degree. So it says that there exist the elements of coordinate 0, 0, and it explicitly says that every element has a vertical and uh, a, a horizontal successor. So this is this initial, initial fragment. We have a formula which ax axiomatizes uh, grid relation H, which has the, the following shape. It simply says that if a pair of elements is connected by H, then this element satisfy some, some formula, which is, uh, which he, uh, here we have, we have an example. Uh, this formula say, says what, what are allowed one type coordinates of X and Y and connection by equivalence relations. For example, uh, if uh, we, have, we have nine, nine such, uh, such uh, formulas, each for the possible coordinate, coordinates here, possible combination of coordinates here. And for example, uh, H, uh, phi H00 zero zero tells us about zero zero is, is here, for example. This is, exa this is an element of type zero zero. So it says that if, if there is H connection which starts at this point, then the second point should be, uh, should have coordinates one zero and the connection between them should be only E1 equivalence connection. Yes. And we have similar formulas, formulas for all possible combinations of, of coordinates. An analogous form, formula, of course we may have more than one equivalence relation here. Yes. Sometimes we will have uh, two, as, as, in, as in this case, for example, this is 0, 1, then the next element is connected by E1 and E2 to, to this X element. We, you, we write a similar formula for, uh, for vertical connections, and then we write a group of for formulas which will, be uh, which will ensure this property, this, this completeness of H over, over V. It is, we will say that if we have some elements that are connected by one of the equivalence relations uh, and have appropriate types, then they are connected by H. And that, let, me, let me show you how it works. Mm. Oh, so so uh, in our model, we know that there is ex uh, elements of coordinate zero, zero, and that it has vertical and horizontal, vertical and horizontal successor. This is stated explicitly by our initial formulas. Okay, probably, probably this, this picture is, again, not visible. So maybe I will write it on the blackboard. I, I will draw something on the blackboard. So we know that there, there exists ele an element of coordinate zero, zero. It has horizontal successor and vertical successor. Horizontal successor, uh, oh, and maybe I will just show you formulas. Mm. This formula enforces uh, coordinates one zero on, on, on this element. Yes, because it, stays, it says that if a pair of elements is connected by H, then ah, an appropriate combination of, of uh, coordinates should, should appear. So if we have here zero, zero, that there is only one possible formula, one zero for this. And we know also that this is, these two elements are connected by E1. Yes, similarly, this element will have coordinates 0, 1, and will be connected, oh, probably mm, there is no uh, example for this, but uh, this, will, this will be connected by uh, also, also only E1, also only E1. Then again, this, this element should have successor, uh, horizontal successor, and it, it will be in uh, it will have coordinates to zero, vertical successor, which will have coordinates one, one. The connections will be enforced, uh, I will for this picture, here we will have E2 and E3, and here we will have only, e, only E1. And now what happens? Uh, these three elements belong to the same E1 class. So in fact, there, there is E1 connection here. And 
using one of one of those formulas of, th of those kind, he tests. Uh, again, again, it is not not presented. The, the appropriate formula is not presented on this on this on this slide. But we have a formula which says that if there is a pair of elements connected by E1, one of them of coordinates 0, 1, one of them of coordinates 1, 0, 1, 1, then they are also connected by picture, oh, by by black relation. It has uh, sorry, uh, by, by H, by H. They're, they're connected by H, yes, because this is written uh, in this formula. But in the next step, we know that every uh, pair of elements connected by H having appropriate coordinates is also connected by E2. So we have this E2 connection here. And we'll continue this procedure, yes? We will build a new vertical horizontal successors, and we will always be able to conclude that uh, those elements, th those, those uh, relation H is complete over, over V. So this is just, just a sketch of the proof, of course, but this is the main, main idea. We use, in, in, this, in this argument, we use only transitivity of this relation A, e, 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 I, in fact. Okay, so now I would like to go, go to conclusion. The, these, are, these were all the results I wanted to present. Mm. Some, some in details, some, some in some sketches. Uh, let me just summarize some results and, and uh, tell you about some related results. So regarding two variable logics with equivalence relations, we have the following interesting, interesting small hierarchy, let's just, let's just say. Uh, the satisfiability problem for two variable guarded fragments with equivalence guards is complete for non-deterministic exponential time. I, I presented this proof. Uh, in details, in both finite and general case. Uh, I also sketched the, the ideas for the proof uh, that FO2 with two equivalence relations is next, two next time complete. Uh, there is one intermediate case, two variable guarded fragment with two equivalence relations, but uh, with, with, with these equivalences allowed outside guards. It appears that it is in two exp time. The reason for this is that uh, in this language, we cannot say that a class is realized, a type of a class is realized exactly once, for example. This simplifies things. Uh, this simplifi simplifies things and allows to build tree like models, in fact. Tree like unraveling. And to use, and for example, you, uh, allows to use, uh, we can use. Uh, alternating Turing machines to, to, to check existence of such models. Mm. Working in uh, exponential space. Mm. What else? So if we consider two, uh, two, FO2, two variable logic with some specific number of equivalence relations, then in case of one equivalence relation, the satisfiability problem is next time complete, and we can, we can show finite model property, okay, exponential model property. So simply the proof is just take uh, proof. Uh, the first step is to show that every uh, satisfiable formula has a model with small classes, and then choose only some number of these classes to construct a model. This is, this is quite simple. Two relations are, are two next time complete, as I, as I uh, tried to explain you in some, 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 exam, some, some, some sketches. And three are undecidable, so, so which I won't also won't sketch, it, sketch it to you. Uh, Another related results, instead of equivalence relations, we may consider transitive relations, which are more interesting and uh, more general, in fact, because having a transitive relation in two variable logic, we can say that it's an equivalence. In the guarded fragment with transitive guards, uh, it is not that obvious, that because, because you cannot say for all x, y, if t x, y, then t, y, x, because then you use this transitive relation outside the guard, but it is, it is also possible to enforce that. A, relation, a transitive relation is an equivalence relation. So what are the results? A guarded fragment with, with transitive guards is decidable and 2x time complete, so it is harder, harder than uh, equivalence guards. Uh, FO2 with two transitive relations is undecidable, and the proof also works for guarded fragment if we allow those transitive symbols outside guards. And it is interesting that, that the, the case of FO2 with one transitive relation is up to my knowledge, open. I, I tried to solve it at least two or three times, and 
and it is quite quite difficult. The, the combinatorial nature of, 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 this, of the models is quite complicated. So I, up to my knowledge, this is, this is open. One transit correlation in FO2, a simple question. We do not know if it is, even if it is decidable. Uh, another another uh, possible kind of relations which may be worth investigating are linear orders. They are also natural, of course. And FO2 with one linear order is decidable. It was shown by Martin Otto sometime 10, 10 years ago. And it is, it, is, uh, it is quite easy construction. If we have two linear orders, uh, the situation is much more complicated. There are results by, there is a result by Schwentig and Selme, but uh, this is for the restricted case in which we have only two binary predicates, those, those linear orders, and no other binary predicates. And their argument works only for finite test viability. Up to my knowledge, the general case is, is also open here. Mm. There are also some, some other related results to, to, to this case when, when we allow for some for successor relations also, some combinations. They are also by, by Thomas Selme, by Amaldef Manuel. There is several, several papers at least about, about this. Uh, the third in our order leads to undecidability. Mm. Maybe one, uh, one, one more thing which is wor worth mentioning here uh, is work by, by the group uh, with Mikołaj Bojańczyk, Anke Muschel, Thomas Schwenty, Kruk Segufem, Claire Davy. Uh, they, they considered uh, the so-called data words and also data trees, which are not, not on this slide. Mm, data words are words over a finite alphabet whose positions are, are naturally ordered by a linear order. So we have a linear order. Mm, and every position carries a so-called data value. And these data values are represented by equivalence relations. So, so two nodes are equivalent if they uh, carry the same data value. Mm. This, this is motivated by XML, and uh, it appears that this is decidable if we allow for one linear order, this natural linear order, induced successor relation and an equivalence relation. And so this is a combination of linear equivalences, and, but, but this is, this is uh, uh, only non-elementary upper bound is known here, and it will be very difficult to improve it. Mm. It becomes simpler if we, we do not allow this successor relation. I don't remember the complexity, but it is much, much simpler. But again, in this, in this, in this setting, there is no other binary predicate. There are just three, uh, three uh, binary predicates mentioned, mentioned here and, and only unary predicates. It, it, oh, in fact, they are, they, these are just words, yes, but, but it's similar to unary. Okay, I think, of course, there is, there is much, more much more results on the variable logic, but I, I concentrated on those. Uh, related, related to satisfiability in restricted classes of models, restricted by some uh, requirements of equivalence relations, for equivalence relations, transit relations, or linear orders. Okay, thank you very much. That's all. <coughs>